If you're like me, you love color. Our very lives are lived through color, and color can capture moods and feelings. When we create art, we're trying to capture our experiences for others, and one of the best things we can do is use color. When used well, color is a powerful tool that will leave a lasting impression on the viewer. Plus, it can be a lot of fun to use it. But when it's used incorrectly, color can make your art look bleh. Trust me, I know from experience. You see, whether you're just starting out or you've been painting for years, one of the most challenging aspects to making art is color. But with the right tools and knowledge, you will be able to harness the power of color. Over the series of some videos, my goal is to help expand your knowledge of color theory and give you some tools to make your art go to the next level. Today, we're going to start with defining some terms about color. When I started painting, all sorts of different words were being thrown around. This color is the wrong value, you should use a different hue, so on and so forth. It was like a whole different language was being spoken. And when you don't know a language, it's difficult to follow along. And if you want to harness the power of color, you got to know the DNA of colors like the back of your hand. So let's define some words related to color theory, starting with the obvious question. What is color theory? Color theory sounds like a really big and complex idea, but it's really simple. Color theory is the study of how different colors interact with each other to make a good looking design. Color theory can range from color mixing all the way to what we feel when we see a certain color. And every color can be broken down into three categories. We'll call these the three pillars of color. The first pillar of color is called hue. The hue is the basic way to describe the color of something. You use these all the time. You know, red, orange, blue, yellow, green, so on and so forth. The way we see color is by using these little receptors called cones in our eyes. Light travels at different wavelengths, and when it starts to enter the eye, the cones receive the wavelength, send signals to the brain, and translates the light into color. When you see a rainbow, you are looking at the range of our visible light spectrum and you're seeing all of the various hues that we are able to see. So with all that science jumbo out of the way, when we describe color as red or blue or so on and so forth, we're describing the hue of a color, which is a particular wave of light in the spectrum. Now it doesn't matter how vivid or muted that blue is, it doesn't matter how light or dark the blue is, the hue remains the same. The second pillar of color is called saturation. This may be the most familiar of all the different terms. Saturation is the intensity of a color. The higher the saturation, the more vivid a color looks. We could also say that saturation is the purity of a color. A very similar term that's often used is chroma. Chroma is technically distinct from saturation, but in practice, both words are often used interchangeably. When a color is less saturated, or what we would call desaturated, the color will look muted and less intense. This means the color will be shifting either toward black or toward white. And when people talk about dirty or muted colors, they're usually talking about desaturated colors. For example, a desaturated green will look contaminated and no longer pure. Hey, real quick before I share with you the third pillar of color, I'm going to be releasing several other color videos in the near future, and I recommend you being subscribed so you don't miss out on those. Thanks. Finally, the third pillar of color is called value. Value is simply the brightness or darkness of a color. And really, value is probably the most important element in painting even more important than the hue of a color. If your values look right, then your painting is going to turn out good. You could have the most nonsensical hues and the painting will still look accurate. Now value can sometimes be difficult to see when starting out, but your eyes will be trained to see it as time goes on. There are two things that can help you out at the beginning though. First, either buy and create your own black and white value scale. A value scale ranges from the darkest dark to the lightest light, and then you can compare your colors to the value scale to see where they land. The second thing you can do is convert your painting to grayscale. I do this all the time, I take a photo of the painting and then I go into a program, remove all the saturation from it. This ends up taking all other factors out of the painting and lets you just see the values for what they are. Something you should know though is that different colors will have inherently different base values. For example, a saturated yellow will never be as dark as a saturated violet. Here's a quick look at the light spectrum in grayscale to see it out. I think this actually comes really naturally to us without realizing it. If you're more interested in this though, Marco Gucci has a really great video on this that I'll link below. So with those three pillars of color, hue, saturation, and value, you'll be able to describe color when painting and you are going to be able to perfectly manipulate color to your advantage. Now there are a few other terms that I'll define in a moment, but let's put what we've learned into practice real quick. I'm going to put a color on the screen and I want you to describe the color based on the three pillars value, saturation, and hue. For example, this is a dark desaturated violet. Okay, now it's your turn. Try it with this one. All right, are you ready? You think you got it? 
This is a dark, saturated blue. Okay, one more. Here's another one. All right, this is a light, desaturated orange. Okay, one more quick exercise. Here is our baseline color, a nice middle of the road red. Now I'm going to reveal a second color next to it, and I want you to compare the second color to the first color, and then tell me if the second color is more or less saturated and darker or lighter. Okay, here we go. This orange is less saturated and it's darker than the red. And this will be often how you compare colors whenever you paint. Great job. Now, the more you train your eyes, the more naturally you'll be able to do these color comparisons during the painting process. And before you know it, this will come naturally and you won't even realize it. Now, before we finish, there are three smaller terms that I'll quickly define. Shade, tint, and tone. A shade is when you add black to a color. This will darken and desaturate a color. A tint is when you add white to a color. This will lighten and desaturate a color, and it will make this pastel-like color scheme. A tone is when you add gray to a color, which usually just desaturates the color. Generally with watercolor, which is my painting medium of choice, these terms aren't as important, but they come up occasionally, so it's good to be aware of them. And now that we know the most basic terms about color theory, we can finally move on to where the colors come to life, the color wheel. Be on the lookout for that video. In the meantime, check out this video where I use only three colors to paint a portrait.